Boom, hello everyone! Um, welcome back to the Resonant Indie Creator stream. Um, if this is your first, if this is the first of, in this series that you're catching, hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Rachel. I'm the community manager at Resonim. This weekend is kind of my brainchild to fill the hole in my heart of not getting to see all of my publisher and creator friends in real life at real in-person Gen Con. Um, obviously, Gen Con Online was the right call this year, but um, just kind of wanted to hang out with friends and do that. Um, kind of bring all of our friends together that we would have seen at Gen Con that we are now not going to get to see for like another year and it's super sad. Um, so for the first um, stream of today, I'm joined by our really good friends at Board Game House, which I'm sure most of you already know. Um, they've been on the channel a bunch and I've been over there a few times. I am a mod on their channel as well. Um, they have been streaming really engaging and fun board game content on Twitch for almost two years, which is crazy. Um, if you all want to introduce yourself and just say what your channel's about. Yeah. <laughs> I you just said he didn't realize we were already on the screen. Oh, what did, do you think I was just talking? I was just like, I I just sit in this room and, and just do intros to no one all the time and my family's very concerned about me. Face, I didn't know that it was the whole thing. Yeah, hello, <laughs> you're live. Uh, do you wanna just introduce Board Game House and just you guys in general? Whatever you wanna say about yourselves? Hello, from Board Game House. We play board games on the internet for you! Woo! Woo. <laughs> Ray just introduces oh. people to themselves. I hate that. I feel weird on other people's channels doing it. Like, it's it's weird. Like, on mine, like, I'm like, yeah, this one. I mean, I'm that's... Woohoo. Also known as the theater stud in chat. Oh, yeah, we don't have our names. I'm the, I, I'm the evil Steven that always likes to take over uh, sponsoring the Big Cup itself. Yeah, I wasn't sure where you guys were going to be sitting, so Board Game House um, is, yes. is your name tag. <laughs> I'm Megan, otherwise known as now the gaming mess in chat. Oh, is that you? That's Wait! Me. Oh my god! <laughs> I was so confused! Okay, I thought that it was you, but so you popped in during my interview with Paladin yesterday, and I was like, who is this person who's been subscribed for a year who knows me and Paladin, whose name I don't recognize? It really, it really freaked me out. I did this to Polly the other night. Oh, I hate <laughs> that. I hate that so much. Um, is that going to be like the name of your channel or is that? Okay, cool. Um, do you know when, when can we expect that coming for real? If you can say. <laughs> oh, thank you, Alkali. Probably have it up and running by this coming week. Ooh, I got both of it done last Ooh, night. that's exciting. Yeah, oh it'll be gosh. in the afternoons. I know that. Yeah, afternoon streaming. I've honestly um, found afternoon streaming to be kind of more fun than evening streaming because, like, I have more energy at like two than I do sometimes at like six or seven. So I hope I hope you like it. Like the couple times I've done like afternoon streams, I've really I've really enjoyed them. Um, are they going to be on the same nights as Board Game House, like as a precursor to Board Game House, or? I haven't, I haven't fully decided yet. Mm -hmm. My goal is to do like, you know, the weekly thing, doing like all the days. Yeah. But that will probably not <laughs> last very long. All the days? Oh Jesus! That that I... is. Who boy? <laughs> oh boy. Um, and then Derek, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Derek. Nice. Good job. You did it. Ding. That's it. That's the, that's the whole interview. That's the whole stream. Um, as you can probably tell, we're going to be playing uh, the TTS version of Mechanica, which is one of our games um, from Resonim. Um, we are going to be doing kind of a, um, a play and pass situation where they're all on the same account and going to kind of be moving around the table to play at the different boards. Because technically, Mechanica is one of those games where you actually don't need to have multiple copies of the game because there is no hand situation. You good, Derek? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so yeah, we're gonna kind of just hang out and play Mechanica. Um, I might ask some interviewee questions. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it, everybody. Um, so where is everyone sitting at the table? So I'm here. Steven's across from me. Um, and Derek then... is to your left, and I am to your right. Derek is player board two if you hover over it, and Megan is player board four. Ah, okay, okay. Um, I will go first because I have Armando in front of me. Um, all right, so if you've never seen Mechanica before, this is Mechanica. It is a um, engine builder game about building totally not evil robots um, for one to four players. So we're gonna kind of just go through it. Um, they all know how to play, I know how to play. Um, so we're kind of just gonna play and hang out and chat. 
Um, all right, so what do we have for our first, let's see. Um, first things we wanna do is everyone grab a basic bot and put it in your, oh my God, everyone's already done that except for me. I hate myself. <laughs> wow, okay, great. <laughs> I feel very, very left behind. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. What? <laughs> Let me hit a coin just... Because we were flinging things. Yes! <laughs> I kind of wish we had streamed me teaching you all how to learn Tabletop Simulator because they were all like, whoa, and you can throw things. And like, Derek lost his shit because he could flip the, the, the vaults over and move them. <laughs> and apparently that's hysterical. So. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It is. This is pretty silly. Uh, all right, we're going to start by pressing Armando to the bloop. Um, and then everyone run your factories, and then we'll take our individual turns. So everyone move Look your bots. Back. You think chemical weapons are extremely, extremely rudimentary. The more you know. The more you know. Um, chat, you can't see this because I've turned off all the UI stuff, but every time you click Armando in the tabletop simulator version, Armando gives you a little um, like quippy line. Um, we also have an app that you can do that will say it every time. Um, <laughs> that was me playing. Just put it away. Hold on. Megan tried to cheat. I already have a, a plus <laughs> bot out there. Okay. All right, I'm cool. going to take my turn. Um, so this is the little reminder card if you've never played the game before. Um, we all start by running our individual factories on the little factory boards and you move all your bots one peg down the line and then we all take individual like upkeep turns. So the way this works is the first thing you do is you sell any bots that are in your truck section, which is over here. Um, you buy improvements from the shop wheel here. Um, and then you make new bots in your fabricators, which is the left side of your board. They all have to move their way over to the right to be sold. And then you rotate the shop and bring out new pieces. And that's pretty much it. Leave my vault alone. Put it down, sir. Excuse me. Um, Notorious for touching other people's <laughs> shit. <laughs> so I'm going to sell my white bot because, you know, I have one and there's no real reason to keep it in my truck right now. Um, and I'm going to sell it for you don't two. You already have a copy of Mechanica? Me? Head over to Kickstarter right now. Check out Surrealist Dinner Party, where you can also back on a tier and get Mechanica at a discounted price. Have all of the yeah. uh, copies of the Kickstarter version sold out yet? No, I think we still have a, um, like a. Oh my or god! Get yeah. the Kickstarter version. Yeah, seriously, this may be your last chance to get the upgrades. We're not playing with them on the TTS version because um, we don't have them implemented yet. Um, I think we have Overlords, but I don't think we have expansions in here yet. Um, but yeah, if you want to get the expansions to Mechanica, this might be your last chance to get it. So check out um, the Surrealist Dinner Party Kickstarter, which we haven't talked about all weekend yet. We have a Kickstarter if that is something that you want to get in on. All right, let me see what P what do we have out on the board. So we have a repurposer and we have a downgrader. God, neither of those are very helpful this stage in the game. What? There's a reflection of windows on the table. There's a reflection. But there's no windows anywhere to be found. Dude, what are you ta what are you talking about? I mean, oh, if you hover over the table oh. it's shining and you can see windows. Yeah, cuz it's that natural lighting. <laughs> yeah. But, I just want to uh, point out that we have an hour and we can't do our usual BGH <laughs> take 8 hours to do things. <laughs> um, but yeah, you Steven, you you decide what that means. Where are the windows? I don't know. That's 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 a you thing. I really want none of these um, upgrades right now, to be completely honest. Oh, God, I guess what we'll do, honestly, we're gonna start by buying a truck because I don't really want any of those. So we're gonna spend five, it's five, yeah, five for a big truck and throw that in a my big truck or huge, huge truck. truck, sorry, huge truck goes right in there. Um, and I believe that's all I'm gonna buy on my first turn. I don't really want anything else. Um, so I'm gonna make new bots, I'm gonna grab a white bot. It's actually been a hot minute since I played Mechanica. <laughs> and then I'm going to, my favorite part of the TTS version is you can press this little button and everything goes bloop. And we have a new improvement. Um, so well, that is. Perfect. Our toes. Well done. Um, yeah, so this is Mechanica. Um, if you're interested in it, um, you can find it on our website and on Amazon and all those fun places. Um, <laughs> Fixio says, I have no idea what's going on. That's fine. <laughs> um, we're basically just casually playing through Mechanica. If you have any questions about like, you know, the mechanics, let me know. Um, but yeah. Um, so, well, um, who's taking their turn? Is it um, Derek? Derek is taking Derek, all right. So while Derek is taking his turn, I'm gonna ask a question. Um, this is actually a question that no matter what I wanna talk about, because I actually don't know the answer to it, which is how did 
Derek and Megan meet Steven, because I don't know that origin story at all, and I'm very curious. Because the three of you have been living together for a while now, and I don't know okay, how you found don't each other. Together. Oh. Not the same. I'm sorry, you, you live adjacent to each other. Mm. Um, so, in 2013? Jesus, was it that long ago? Something like that, yeah. Lord have mercy. Uh, Steven and I were in a production of Chicago together. Okay. Just after he and his and um, his ex girlfriend moved down here. Yep. Um, was that your first show? Uh, yes. Uh, one more, Derek. Hmm. You put away six, and the PC you bought is seven. Uh oh, cheater. Um. <laughs> um. So then we kind of, because I was only able to do summer shows, so we kind of lost touch in the middle, and then. I feel like me and the group of friends that we have now is really what like solidified everything, mm -hmm. which didn't come about until 2015 when we did Cabaret. I feel like is when we all got really, really, really close. Yeah. Um, I'm done. I yeah. bought a thing. You gotta put your buy. You click it. So what'd you, you get? Use... So Derek bought the Upgrader, which takes one bot of any color and upgrades it to the bot of the next color. Um, so yeah, once we have everyone has their first couple pieces, um, we can run through like how the actual engine building works, and you'll you'll see that um, as we play. And thank you so much for that follow, um, llamas. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Um, so yeah, you guys met through musical theater. That's kind of the yeah. the origin story. Okay. That's interesting. And then um, it took a little while for me and Lauren to introduce Derek and Stephen together because. They're oddly similar, and we knew that they would butt heads a little bit. So it took me like a year. Interesting. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> so, but that that's that's the 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 origin story. Okay, because I never, I just kind of assumed you guys have all like known each other forever. Um, but I guess meeting through musical theater makes makes a ton of sense. Um, yeah. For you and Stephen at um, least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the next question that I have. Um, Unless, Steven, you want to walk us through what you're doing on your turn. Uh, what would you get? You I got? am buying the... Uh, another upgrader came out, so Damn. I'm going to buy the upgrader. So cool. it costs 10, so I will... Just yeah, so if you're trying to follow along, um, this board over here is Derek, and then this is Steven, and this is Megan, and in front of me is me. Um, and basically, we're just going through the first couple phases, which is basically choosing, you know, which of these pieces from the shop wheel we want to start our factories off with. Um, I got two of the um, upgraders, or the two of the improvements that are downgrader and repurposer, which I find not very helpful until later in the game. The upgrader is a great piece to start with, um, because it takes your very basic boss that you're making at the beginning and makes them more valuable. Um, and I just kind of got screwed because they weren't out on the board when it was my turn. So there's that. Um, All right, so now we have the static charger. Every time a bot goes through this machine, um, these little holes, uh, the little black circles that you see um, in the actual game, they're little punch outs. Um, but every time a bot goes through it, it produces one extra white bot in those holes. And then the next time you run your factory, that bot will hop onto the conveyor belt and go down the line with everything else. Um, but that's one you kind of have to think about because if you don't have enough truck space to hold those bots, they go away and that's no good. So it takes a little bit of planning to use that one well. Wait, Megan, do you, are you still cheating, Megan? <laughs> it's not my fault you all said you reset it. Clearly it was not reset. Derek, you were the one that was supposed to re oh, was shit. reset it. Oh, shit. Put this over here. <laughs> Alright. So what just came up? Uh, a static charger. Yeah, so we okay. have... Uh, a repurposer and a static charger. That makes two. Well, it, as it go through, it puts another extra bot up. And then it sends it through. Mm. First you need to sell your bot, though. Well, don't tell me what to do. <laughs> Maybe oh my I god, Megan, I'm, I, yes. <laughs> Woman after my own heart. <laughs> Telling Steven to not tell us what to do. Okay, so I get to... Uh, you said you had another question? I did, yeah. So just in general, um, for anyone who hasn't um, met you folks yet, um, we actually met at Gen Con. We met at one Gen Con unknowingly, and then we met intentionally the next Gen Con, because in between those Gen Cons, we got to know each other online, and we put together the fact that we had met without knowing who we were at Gen Con. It's really, it's a cute, it's a cute story. I was demoing Visitor 
on Sunday, the very last day of Gen Con. You were sold out of it. Oh, yeah, we had sold out of it. Yeah, this is this is That's true. 2017. 2018? 2018. 2018. So this was Gen Con 2018. Um, and I remember um, BGH came up. I didn't know who they were, but Megan had some, um, she had a bag that she had painted with a bunch of board game stuff. And she had like a monarch, the, the banner of might or something painted on her bag. And I remember that because when people show us, you know, that kind of stuff that really sticks in your head, even though you meet like 200, 300 people during that convention. Um, and then I found their Twitch channel because they were playing Monarch on their Twitch channel. And they were like, oh, we were at Gen Con. We got to meet you. And I was like, oh, you might have met me. Like I might have demoed it. And then we put it together that I did demo to them. And then we became best friendos. And then we got to actually meet intentionally the next Gen Con. And it's just been a good, a good time. What happened to that blueprint? I don't know where it went. She threw it on the ground. I saw one of the big truck, uh, one of the like, huge keep truck. Keep going. There yeah. it is. <laughs> There's so many blueprints over here. I'm just breaking things, it's fine. Can I, do they not what? go back? What have you done? <laughs> That's okay, I'll make I'll make a little pot. Wait, oh God, they're all upside down now. Okay, Um. here, here, we'll just, we'll just do, we'll do this and we'll put them back and we'll, it's all fine, it's all fine. Um, ooh, Fixiel says, I stopped by on Sunday last year and Max talked me out of buying the demo copy of Visitor. <laughs> yeah, that was the right call. You would get a disease from that copy, Fixiel. I swear to God. They get so, we were talking about this with Gather Round Games. Um, oh, here, I can, I can grab them for you. I'll take it. Oh, There's what? so many. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. <laughs> it's just endless. Okay. Okay. Um, 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 that's not what we want to do. Get it, get in there. Okay, there we go. These are the two blueprints okay. now. Don't touch. No touchy. <laughs> no touch. Um, because so you're about to drop one into the thing. When you uh, Fixio says probably because it had a thousand, <laughs> had the germs of a thousand people. Yeah, we have had people buy demo copies, and we usually do it at a discounted price of like ten or fifteen dollars. But if anyone comes up to me and asks me for a demo copy, I try to talk them out of it. We've had some people who've been very adamant about it. Um, but I will do everything in my power to tell you no, because I know how gross they get. Like, I have seen people bleed, like, someone got, like, a paper cut from one of our games and was, like, bleeding on it, and people sneeze and then touch it. It's gross. It's gross. And if you want to pay $10 to get a disease, that's fine. I don't. You're not, you're not selling the con life. So, um, Rachel, <laughs> question. Yes. Uh, now, when she pushes the button, it's gonna make that- I'm gonna get this. That's gonna fall in. But yep. if she already has, if she's already gotten her bots, if she already created her next bot, can she replace that white bot with that purple bot? So they can go in any of the holes in your fabricator zone. So there's holes up at the top and there's holes at oh. the bottom. Gotcha. Okay. Well, this happened last we time. Do we this thought every single time. We so play. I'll explain this to chat real quick. If you've never played the game before, um, you have what is it like five? Okay, Wait. or don't let me explain it to chat. Well, <laughs> no, you're fine. I, I, you can, I was just about I'm to explain, and you're like, boop. <laughs> So I know that I'm getting a, a purple butt. So basically, there's five slots on this shop wheel right here, and you'll notice that this one is a hole in the board. And when you get the actual copy, this is actually a cutout. And when you spin the wheel, if there's a piece here, it'll fall into the hole. And if that happens on your turn, you get automatically the recycle value for that piece. You can manually recycle pieces if you want, but you can also get them by default if they drop into the hole on your turn. And so the recycle value is that little recycle symbol at the bottom right of every um, puzzle piece. And so if you get, if you recycle this piece, you get two orange bots and Megan, the piece that she had gave her one purple bot for recycling it. And that can go wherever she has space in her fabricator zone. So she's put it up here. Um, yeah, that's so funny. Fix you. Oh man. Oh wait, that's actually really cute. I, w I was probably there and I probably didn't know who you were either. So we can also have a cute meeting story where we met without knowing and then met when knowing cute. conventions are weird. All right. Um, so, like you may have met me. Like, yeah, we got demoed by a girl that's really tall and had like bright colored hair. And it was like you, Max, and Suki at the booth. Yeah, I was like, if you, if there were, if it was a woman, it was me. <laughs> if you remembered being a woman, twas me. Oh, we get a meet cute fixiel. I'm excited. I'm excited. Someday, some convention, when conventions are a thing again. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I remember our second meeting in person. Yeah. The whole time we met, all you were doing is. This, this is weird. weird. This, this is, is so weird. weird. This the, when weird. we met, when we met after having met each other before, yeah. Oh, it was so weird. It was just because yeah, well, like, <laughs> I had met you in real life, not knowing who you were, and then I met you online, and I'd been watching your faces for almost a year, 
and then not a year, maybe like six months. Um, and then seeing your faces in real life again, having seen your face, it was so weird. And I am kind of upset that it wasn't as weird for you all. Cause I was like, my mind was not okay. <laughs> I was trying to eat a quesadilla and I'd look over and she was just smiling at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why do you have to make me sound so weird? Because don't... it was weird. <laughs> I don't appreciate that. It was not okay. not appreciated. <laughs> our turn is over. Okay, so we're back to Armando. Everyone run your factories. I'll do a little bloop. Um, click the Armando button. And so typically this would be to like the right of whoever's the first <laughs> no. player. I bought nuclear power cores, make them effectively immortal. Yeah, right. Just good uh, to know. Um, so, um, oh, well, wait, basically, this is a um, a simultaneous play button. When you press this, everyone wants their factory at once, and then we go back around again, and everyone takes their upkeep turns. So I have absolutely jack shit in my factory, and so my bot is just going to go into my hole, and that's it. Um, Snorri Bear says maybe she was smiling at the quesadilla. Cheese makes people happy. Thank you, Snorri Bear. Right. Derek, you don't have to always make it about you, Derek. Honestly, not everything's about you. Those quesadillas I were disagree. good, though. <laughs> of course you do. Um, what is it? Do I keep the other one or does it go away? No, it goes It goes away and becomes an orange bot. Um, what's the issue? Oh, yep. So you... And I'll give you your orange bot. There you go. I gave she it. touched your piece, Derek. Are you going to yell at her? It wasn't my piece. Um, so you put a white bot in that hole and it comes out an orange bot. Great. Um, uh, and then this is the downside of having one of having pass and play, but maybe one person can just, I can also run it for other people as well. Um, oh, Megan, did you make a white bot or did you already run your factory? You already did. I already ran my factory. Well, well overachiever. Probably. Overachiever. All right. I'm going to start looking at my, the pieces for next turn. Cause my turn wasn't yeah, very ahead. interesting. So I have a repurposer. I have static charger. And a repurposer. So I'm going to get this repurposer, the recycle value for free, because it's going to go into the, the hole on my turn. God, this is the second turn in a row when I've had friggin' things I don't want. Actually, static charger isn't the worst thing right now. I will take a static charger for five. Oh, I don't have enough money. Oh, yes, I do. Hey, um, Noah, thank you so much for hosting. Really appreciate it. Welcome on in. Good friends from Bored and Drunk. So I'm going to start by selling, actually, I'm going to keep my white bot. I'm not going to sell it, but I am going to, for five moonies, um, buy the static charger. Ooh, this song is too much. No, thank you. There we go. That's better. I was going to say something about it, but we can't hear it. So it doesn't matter. Mm, great. It's true. But yeah, I love that you were going to complain anyways. Um, all right. I'm going to put my static charger here. Um, hey, PSP, thank you for the happy butts. Appreciate it. Um, and that's all I'm going to do for improvements, I think. Because I have plenty of truck space here. I don't really need to do that. And I also have absolutely no money. So there's nothing I can do even if I wanted to. So I bought my improvements. I'm going to make bots. All I can make right now is another white bot at the start of, at the start of my factory and turn the wheel. And give everyone else better shit that I didn't have the opportunity to buy. Like a gift wrapper. God damn it. Um, yeah, that's my whole turn. Um, yeah, welcome on in, Mr. Valley, Noah, and PSP. Thank you so much for joining. Um, really appreciate it. Thanks for being Did you here. Michael. Oh no, I didn't. Yeah, it was two orange box. Bloop. I uh -huh. said that, but I didn't take it. It was. I said it. Uh huh. Sure. Oh my God. On my turn, I can't do dickery, so pass. <laughs> well, you gotta. You, you gotta. gotta you still gotta do all the other stuff. I know that technically we're supposed to run our things at the same time. Yes. But would it actually be easier on tabletop sim to just go ahead and run our, like, right as our I turn is over? Possibly. Yeah, I, I think that might have some technical, like, or turn of order implications. I'm trying to think. If you... Maybe not. Let's let's just keep doing it the way we're doing it for now. Um, just Just... Um, in case we put this up on YouTube or whatever, people see like how it's technically supposed to go. Um, and I, I can help run people's factories for them too. Hi YouTube. If we if we run out of time, we will just simply uh, flip the table and Wonderful. not know who wins. Great. Just like real life. Just that's I mean that's how every board game with me goes as well. 
Uh, PSP says, I love this um, I love this game. Had so much fun playing it at Gen Con last year. Thank you so much, PSP. I loved showing it to you. It was super fun. I love, I love when people from the community come by the booth. Oh my God. Seeing a friendly face, you have no idea. Like 98% of the people that I demo for at Gen Con are great. That 2% though are the worst and they make you feel so shitty about yourself. And having friendly faces is just, is really, like I've had, I've only had a couple of really negative experiences demoing, but having friendly faces come by later is like, it's, it, we appreciate it. Always come find me and give me a hug. Like, please, if you see me at a convention, I please say hi. Um, at, even when people are at, great, at, like, yeah, what was that? At PAX Unplugged on Sunday, we came by in the morning as soon as everything opened and I gave Spring a, a, a breakfast biscuit and the the look on, Rachel wasn't even going to get to eat this biscuit. And I wasn't there on Sunday. Both, just like, oh my god, this is the nicest thing yeah. anyone's done to me. Bring us food. If Well, if I know you, don't, if I don't know you, don't bring me food. But if I know you, food and coffee, like, I will, you'll have my love for the rest of the day. Oh my god. Like, Oh, I've had, I've had people bring me cough drops and stuff that it just like, it's just nice. Cause like demoing is really fun, but it's also tiring and we don't get time to eat or leave the booth, um, or anything like that. So it's because Max is a dictator. Yes, obviously. Yeah. Not that we're a tiny company and understand. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it would never be anything like that. Um, that and like when people offer to go buy games for us, cause oftentimes there's games that are being released at Gen Con that I want to get that I don't have the time to go like buy. Um, chicken says, I'm going to go to a con and leave a single chicken nugget with no words. Oh my God, chicken. If I ever get to meet you at a con, that'll be it for me. Like I'll be so happy, but also that's hysterical. Uh, okay. So my next question, which is actually very much related to this conversation. Um, is do you each have a favorite convention of the ones that you've been to? And it doesn't have to okay. be, doesn't have to be Gen Con. I was wondering, cause you guys have been to like Dragon Con, you've been to PAX Unplugged. What has been your experiences at those different cons and which one's your favorite and why? Dragon Con, there's way too many people. Mm, interesting. Uh, there's way too many drunk people. Ah. PAX Unplugged was nice, but it was very cold. And oh, just like just weather wise in general, not like the convention hall yeah, was particularly cold. Was too cold. And then uh, the thing about Gen Con, though, is that they have food trucks and beer. And honestly, if you provide those two things, yeah, I'll be content. For I'll sure, for anything. sure. I'll, I'll do anything for food and beer. You heard it here first, chat. Derek this will do anything for food and beer. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Um, so Steven, your answer was Gen Con, no question. Uh, yeah, I mean, and like, I've been to like, you know, PAX Unplugged, I've been to Origins and I've been to Gen Con. And mm. For me, it's like Origins, it's a great con, but it, I feel like there's something about the way that Gen Con organizes the floor mm. that makes it easier to navigate and makes it easier to understand sure. where things are located. Sure, yeah. At Origins, you have like a big a publisher next to uh, so it's just pushing a Kickstarter for the first time next to an artist. Like, there's no rhyme or reason to the floor play the layout. They don't have an artist and, alley. I've never been to Origins. Um, so yeah. do they not have like an artist section? That's no, so weird. It's all just I don't like them that. Different places. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, they're artists. That was one of my favorite. <laughs> Thank you for quoting that barefoot. I appreciate it. You're now in our quote system, Derek. Yes. Um. But yeah. So like. There's something about, like, even though Gen Con is a huge con, mm -hmm. and it can be overall because there are, like, 20,000 events or 70,000 events going on throughout the course of the weekend, there's Either some... 20 or 70,000. It's somewhere between, between. Not, not, not in between. Not in Either between. Or gotcha. I think it's 20,000 or 70,000 people. Either yeah. way, like, even though it's a very large con, mm -hmm. the way that it is organized and laid out, uh, yeah. it, it just... It, there's also something different that where a normal like a Wizard World or a Comic Con where you have so many different fandoms kind of coming together, mm -hmm. uh, like you have Star Trek versus Star Wars, yeah. you know, you have like the anime community versus like the Marvel community, kind of, like with board games and tabletops, it's like everyone's there for the same. It's reason. more, it's more confined, yeah. Um, real quick, Megan, did you finish your turn? 
Not yet. Okay. Um, I'm trying to decide who's going to get the orange. I was going to give you the orange, um, but you don't have a spot. That would be a so. good reason to give it to me, then. If you want to be mean about it. <laughs> Is I don't have a spot for it. Um, if anyone's like, wondering what Megan's dealing with, she just picked up the uh, overactive fabricator, which allows her to make more than just white bots on her turn. It lets her make either an orange or a purple. The catch is, is that if she makes an orange, she gives everyone at the table a white. Um, and if she makes a purple, she gives everyone at the table an orange. So actually you don't get to choose. Everyone? Or is it just yeah, one it's person? everybody? It's everyone. We've been playing that wrong. Been Are you that joking? Wrong. Not how many joking. times, Rachel? How many times have you watched our stream when we were playing? I don't one pay of attention. Games, and you just sat there and just that willy nilly. Let just watch them do whatever the hell I they just, want. I just, I'm not always. I'm listening and to, to, I'm watching your lovely faces. I'm not really. I hot take. I don't really watch you guys for the board game play. Like I just watch oh. you for the friends. <laughs> Nobody does. Yeah, fuzzy fuzzy might watch us. Yeah, Fuzzy is the Fuzzy Logic is the one person who really does. Uh, yeah, no, everyone gets everyone gets the the bot model that you choose. So which one I are saw, you? I saw, I saw Rachel's little finger moving around the table. I thought it was oh. a cockroach. I thought they added just like little animation. Ew. <laughs> uh, okay, Megan, which one did you decide to go with? Uh, I, I did the purple. Some will you? Yep, I got it. Me? Yeah, yeah, no worries. You're good. Um, yeah, so everyone take an orange. Um, I'm actually going to not take an orange because I actually want to keep my white. So I'm not going to take it and put it on my board. Um, I gave one to, or to Steven already. Steven, do you want one? Uh, I think I have. I gave him one. You already. gave him one already? Okay, cool. So now we're back to Armando and everyone run your factories again. Bloop. Um, chat, I'll show you what my, my factory running looks like. So. On my turn, I'm going to move all my orange bots into my trucks because there's nothing stopping them on their way. Armando said, please from re refrain from touching me without washing your hands. In fact, just refrain from touching me at all. That is not a mood. I don't know what is. Me so too. Um, so that white bot goes in there, but because it went through my static charger, I get to add a little white bot there who will go through next time. All right. Um, I'll let you guys finish running your factories while I take my, my turn. So we are going to sell these two orange bots. They each sell for four four monies. So I will take um, eight of these. Into my nope, hand. Nope. Whoa, whoa. My tabletop simulator skills leave something to be desired. Okay, great. Um, and then we're gonna buy with all our heckin' money another static charger, a gift wrapper, or a purpose or oh good i really okay fine we'll take uh we'll take a gift wrapper for the heck of it um we'll put it at the end of this section right here and that was how much that was five one two three four five okay i only have two two monies left so i think that's all i'm gonna do in terms of buying stuffs um, if chat, if you're wondering why I have these two white bots just hanging out here and I haven't sold them, it's because you can get blueprints as well. If you have the right number of bots and the right colors of bots in your trucks at the same time, instead of selling them for their market price, you can turn them in for a blueprint, which gives you more money, but it's money that doesn't go into your hand. It goes into your vault, which means you can't access it, but it's points at the end of the game. Um, so I'm hoping to get that, but we'll see if it happens. Um, and that is all I'm doing there. Make new bots, make a white bot, because that's all I've got going on and turn the wheel. Bloop. All right, and that brings out another downgrader. And that's my turn. Wait, did you take the the blueprint? Mm, -mm not yet. I can't afford it. I only have two. I have to have three white bots. Oh, you're going to get real mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> you have three white bots, right? No, I have a uh... I have a purple oh, and two. Oh, you're going for the other one. I'm not. I'm nowhere close to that one, so you can take it. It's fine. We'll we'll trade yeah. these. Don't they both go away? I thought away? they had both had to leave once somebody did one of them. Mm -mm. Jesus Christ. At least not how I understand it. <laughs> I mean, you made it. I mean, I did. I can check the rules. I'm pretty sure. Hold on. I'm selling my orange boys. Yeah. Selling your orange boys. No, it literally, all that happens is, maybe they both clear? I don't think they do. 
I don't think they do. That's a good question. The remaining players, blah, 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 blah. Then turn both player buttons sideways in case they will be replaced at the end of the work day. Yeah, they both get turned sideways. No! That's not true! That's not true! Then turn both player buttons sideways to indicate that they will be replaced at the end of the work day. Ye what? Okay, finally a rule that you guys have gotten right that I would get wrong. Apparently, you suck, Megan! <laughs> she left. <laughs> Um, all right. Cool. You suck. You suck. I'm sorry. You should be. Charger, when one goes through, another one goes through? Nope. Well, so, so when one goes through, it creates another one on top of it, but that one doesn't move until the next turn. Yeah, it stops. But the first one doesn't stop. Yeah, the first one goes through, the other one is created. Megan has left the chat. <laughs> um, Okay. So Derek, you're working on your turn. Let's see. What do I wanna? What do I wanna ask? Um, I have a lot of questions. Um, I guess we can we can wrap up the the kind of more Gen Con related questions. Was do you have a favorite Gen Con moment that you can remember? Um, from any either Gen Con that you've been to. Meeting Rachel for the no, first you're time. not. Uh, uh wrong answer. <laughs> Try again. Remember that um, doesn't involve us. <laughs> I mean, you can't if you want, but like, I guess I mine's pretty straightforward. I think it is. I think our first Gen Con experience as a whole, but more specifically, we went and saw Critical Role live that yeah. first year. Um, well, we went and saw both years, but that first year, um, we also got to meet G and Z. Um, oh, I just realized G and Z. That's like they're two letters, and they kind of rhyme. That's all I had to add. I'm sorry. Um, and there's just this is the top tier interviewing content that you came here for. <laughs> there's just something very special and magical about the realizing that in a weird way we found out that hey, we're gonna have conference and yeah. we're gonna have it's a cool you know, moment. We're, we're, we kind of had we found as cheesy as the sound. I felt that I found a place that I belong. Oh, I, it's not cheesy at all. Uh, so I, like, I had that same kind of conversation with Paladin of like, you just find a place that like, you belong and you make sense in. Like, it, that's not cheesy at all, at least in my opinion. Yeah, so like, I guess that for me is kind of like where that was. It was like that, having that, like, it's that you don't want that weekend to end kind of thing. Oh yeah. For mm -hmm. as, as tired it is and as stressful as it is, both I'm sure even being there as a, <laughs> as a, as a person that's participating yeah. and obviously being a defender, but there's something about that environment that I'm sure if you did it all day, every day, it would get, like you get tired of it eventually. Yeah. But that it's like that four days did not seem like it was enough. Yeah. Kind of oh, thing. absolutely. There, there's something about even when you oh are. God, hey, Invert! Thank you for the raid! Hello, friend! Boo! Boo, Boo Invert! Boo! Boo. Get out of here! Boo! Um, thanks for joining, friends. Um, we will be streaming with Invert in about half an hour. Um, right now, I'm hanging out with our good friends at Board Game House uh, at twitch.tv slash Board Game House. I almost said BGH on Twitch, but that's all your other handles except for your actual channel. Um, twitch.tv slash Board Game House. They do um, fun, engaging board game content Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and they're good friends of ours. And right now, we're just kind of chatting about Gen Con. Um, this whole weekend, basically, on the Resonum channel is our Indie Creator Spotlight, where we bring on publisher friends, creator friends, streaming friends in the, like, independent space um, to come on, show us what they're working on. Um, or in this case, I mean, just to hang out with us. You're doing okay, Derek? The coins aren't going. Dude, it doesn't matter, dude. Just put them off to the side. There you go. Um, I have many favorite Gen Con or favorite Yeah, Gen right Con now moments. we're discussing favorite Gen Con moments. Real quick, someone in chat, um, I think it was Fixiel, said their favorite Gen Con moment that I want to read real quick. Um, Fixiel said, my favorite Gen Con moment was the whole audience singing along to the CR theme and the cast just losing their shit. Pretty sure Matt was crying. Yeah, I've really uh, gotten really much more crying. into CR since that like first Gen Con and I really want to see a CR live now. Um, real, real bad. So, one, oh, oh gosh, okay. Why so here, here are them all. Because I just recycled One, from Gen Con 2018. Are you kidding Yeah, was that our first one? 
uh, meeting G and Z for the first time. Uh, Steven yelling at everyone in the convention center to look at Derek changing <laughs> in the middle of the- <laughs> Wait, can we I tell that to story? Tell this because this Wait. is not our community. I had pants on. I had just changed my shirt. I'm not sure. Can we please, Megan, I would love you to tell this story for anyone in chat who does not know this story. For those of you who have been to Gen Con and are like me and can remember areas at in convention centers sure. pretty well, over by where the um, where you get your badges and stuff on that first day. Yep. By there, like down at the end of the hallway, there are double doors, and there was like an area for us to like chill at for a second. After I think it, I think it was after the um, uh, talks. This, it was after talks because you were in your Caleb, Caleb. Like, your Caleb cosplay, your Caleb cosplay, which is why he was changing. So because it was too warm, because. A big old leather jacket in the middle of August. Well, in the beginning. Of August. Um, so he's like, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to change right here. And we're like, just, just change right here. So he, well, he didn't want to change the bathroom. Yeah, he didn't want to change the bathroom. You didn't really want to change out there. People around. So he's like, he's like, I want to take a look at me. So he goes to like take off his shirt, and Stephen's like, Ooh. Hey, everybody, there's a guy over here that's shirtless. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sad. I miss that. Oh my god. I can see just Derek's face turning red. I can see it in my mind. Because then he was like trying to like, hide behind his shirt and change at the same time. <laughs> um, Incredible. So Derek, while we were in line for talks, Derek uh, whacked G in his <laughs> band bits with his bottle of licorice, which was pretty hilarious. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please explain to me what a bottle of licorice is. I had made a component pouch because Caleb just whips out his spell components all the time. Right. So I had a glass boss bottle and had wrapped it in leather. Okay. And I I had put black licorice in it so I could just hand it to people. Oh, that's cute. That's really cute. Well, it was very, it was very close quarters. People were singing and being jackasses in line. And I was trying to converse with G, but he couldn't hear me. So I turned around real fast and that glass bottle just sort of whipped <laughs> and just whipped. <laughs> amazing. Um, Absolutely amazing. The first CR Live that we went to, um, I don't know. I feel like this is spoilers, but so spo CR spoilers from like two years ago. Um, <laughs> Go watch Critical um, Role and then leave yeah. and come back. Where we were sitting, uh, Brian W. Foster and Danny Carr came out and sa sat like behind us and to the to the left. Wait, the us. row right behind. Are you us. shitting yeah. me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, not kidding. So we're sitting there. That's wild. They were, they were building up for stuff. Yeah. For something to happen, and we just kind of sat there and we kind of realized that there was going to be a guest, and then we figured out who the guest was, which was that year was Kari, uh, Kari Payton. Yeah. When his character came back. And there was a moment where I sat there and I looked back at at Danny and Brian and they were both like, oh! I was like, <laughs> this is the best moment of my That's life. That's so fun. Oh God, I really, oh man. I've been like binging a lot of talks lately and that would have just, oh man. Uh, I yeah. also found out, I oh, also like found out that in that, that first year that we went, for the live show, you can see us on Critical Role because my buddies that I played D and D with had just gotten to that episode, and he, as soon as I got there for our last session, he looked at me. He said, "You were at that first CR live in Indianapolis." I was like, "Yeah." It's actually their second. The, whatever. Second, yeah. And he, I said, "Yeah." He said, "I saw you on the balcony. You were you were like five rows up, and you were clapping your hands and everything." And I was like, "Yeah, that yeah, was me." I was I'm clapping my hands and everything, just you know. Being an audience so member. Also, <laughs> also the massive amount of mac and cheese that I had that G looked at me like I was an idiot because I was like, I'm kind of lactose intolerant. And he was like, you're holding like a five pound thing of mac and cheese right Amazing. now. Amazing. But me being G, then just reached into his bag and like, here's some lactate yeah. or something. It was, it was Tums, it was a big old bottle of Tums. He's such a dad, uh, that's so cute. It's like, here you and go. Then, 2019 was, you know, meeting up with you for the first time uh, when we actually knew you. When we actually, yeah, uh, like meeting up for real, for real this time. Yeah. The neighborhood meetup. Yeah, the for meeting, sure. Uh, Bobby and Polly for the first time in person. 
Um, and then Derek walking around the con going, Wood for all! <laughs> because Katana, <laughs> Katana had... Oh, I remember that, the scavenger booth. hunt thing that I can't participate because I was chained to a booth and I just yeah. watched all these <laughs> dumb had... assholes with these sheep hats walking around. I was like, oh, that looks like fun. I can't engage <laughs> with it. Well, that was the problem is that the only assholes walking around had sheep heads. I needed or you couldn't find that rock boy anywhere. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Do, can, should we explain this concept to people? They have little Take buttons. Take your turn. Is Katan, it, whose turn is it? They were little metal pins. And if you collect oh, them this. all, you got a discount at the Catan booth. And they were fun pins to have, but you had to go around to people. They were wearing like- Which is such a fun so idea. Food. Like forcing people to interact with each other is like a, a nice idea. Rachel, uh, She's doing the, uh, she's doing the upgrade. I'm doing the upgrade. Or the... Blueprint? Blueprint. Yeah. You suck. Um, what we'll just do is we'll just, because you're the last person, no one else can do them because you suck. Um, I'll just put them off to the side. I don't know how many... How I'm 20. Many, oh, 20. It's a 20 in my... God damn it, Megan. Jesus Christ. Um, so they were walking around with pins, and you got a pack of four pins, and the pins that you got from them were all the eight. same ones. So if, you, if someone had a big old sheep on their head, you got four sheep pins. You then had to trade with other people to get the full set. Uh huh. And the rock boy was nowhere to be seen. Nobody had any ore, so I just I just gave up and I just started yelling. I had two wood pins, so I just started yelling wood for ore, and they were making fun of me. So sad, so mean. And, but he, you're still like the third or fourth person. I know. I still didn't get the ore. <laughs> big rip. Big rip. Um. Can we Make sure that this is a twenty. Yep. Not a ten. It's, it's a twenty. It's a 20. 20. Um, well, I mean, purple. in my, in my, in this. Yes, oh. It's got a purple. I don't want to. I don't want to cheat. It was a twenty. Okay. I'm gonna put it in your vault. Bloop. All right. Thank you. So the next blueprints are two purples and woo. Um, an orange and a purple. Um, time to run factories. Bloop. Hold on, Megan's about to give bots to everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, I give orange bots to everybody first. I forgot to do that. Did you? Yeah, because I got I got an advanced fabricator. Oh, okay. awesome. Orange bots to everybody. I'm going to go ahead and take that. No, you have an um, advanced I'm... fabricator. You don't give bots to people, Steven. Oh. What? No, you don't. No, you don't. Mine's oh, overactive. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, here. Wait, is it an advanced fabricator? No, yours only has one yeah. blue bar. I can see it from here. Yeah. Um, oh. So, Megan, are you making a purple? I'm making a purple. All right, I can take my own orange. Thank you. Okay, so everybody gets a, 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 a an orange. Nice. Trying... Nope, Derek's oh, already Derek sold. doesn't get anything. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna replace the white boy. Are you gonna replace no. the white one? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna hit you. He did get irrationally angry. It was hilarious. Um, <laughs> I think those are my favorite moments. Like, yeah, those are so great. Like, those were awesome. Yeah, there are too many to count. To oh, be absolutely, honest. for sure, for sure. The Wormwood BGH meetup was probably also like from last year. Find another because we went into that so like I went into that so stressed out oh, because yeah. it it was one of those things. I don't mind admitting this. It was one of those things where like we were we were doing this thing together, right? Mm -hmm. Um but there were definitely more people looking forward to the Wormwood side of it. Mm -hmm. Which is, I mean, they have a Which is, you know, to be expected. But, like, going into that kind of thing where you're supposed to be together and realizing that nobody, gives a nobody shit really you. gives a crap about your section of it if, was yeah, it's stressful to, like, go into. Mm -hmm. But then once we, got, once we got there and, like, met everybody and my nervous energy wore down um, after handing everybody their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I was able to relax and like talk to everybody. I ended up making so many friends at yeah. that meetup. Pally. Like Pally, like, yeah. um, I can't use <laughs> handles. Really yeah, it was really fun so. to to recall with Pally the like our meeting mm -hmm. at that at that meetup. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that that whole night was just such a such a high for me as well, because um, that was the first yeah. time I'd like met internet people in real like yeah. all, all like all in one space, you know. And it's when you meet people, it's like, and maybe people don't understand this, and maybe, maybe to a lesser extent. But when we see your guys' names in chat all the time, we start to build a picture in our head. Of oh what yeah, look like. 
It's so stressful, the idea that someone knows what you look like, but you don't know what they look like, and they could find you at any moment. <laughs> like, that was really terrifying for me, especially at PAX U, once we'd actually, like, had our Twitch channel for a little bit. Um, and there oh, were yeah. some, there were some, especially because that was the, the convention where we met Vanna for the first time, and some of her mods came up to our booth and were like, you're Rachel in Spring, and I was like, who are you? I don't know. You're not Vanna. Well, I don't understand. That was, <laughs> and, like... That was so it's so for stressful. Me, the first time, I, was just, I was walking around Philadelphia, which is a city I've never been before in my life, and somebody said, Hey, you're Derek from Board Game House. I was like, No, I'm not. <laughs> Bitch, no, I'm not. Get out of here. <laughs> Wait, that happened? That's wild. That I've yet to have that happen. Luck, like, the nice thing for me is that, like, nice and bad is that I'm always at a booth, so, like, people know where to find me. I've yet to have someone call me out as I'm walking, um, partly because we're just, like, smaller. Um, but like that's so cool i think that's cool i think probably my my gen con high was meeting you guys on the streets for the first time when we were going oh, to get that lunch well like, not for the we first time cool. for a, a pax you no wait was that the wait no you know this was the second time but it was at pax you it was the first time of that convention and i we like met each other in the street and then we went and we got burritos and it was delicious so i guess that's not a, that's not that was at pax you God, they all blend no, together no. at some point. It was, was Gen Con. Was it? It was, I was sweating. It was Gen Con. Yeah, because remember the intersection? Because you were over. Yeah, were yeah, over yeah. Was that was Gen Con? Yeah, yeah, yes. it was Gen Con. Was that the first that's time the first we met? Time. Yes. Oh. Okay. That's what something we Yeah, catch we picked you up where you guys were staying and then right yeah. okay for some reason i i thought that we met at the booth earlier but i guess we didn't that was the very first time we met in person after meeting for not real yeah. the first time wow chat is not going to be able to follow that story at all i'm yeah. sorry i explained that really poorly <laughs> um, it was the night it was the night before gen con actually started because you had a fancy had a fancy, had a fancy yeah because we were going to the i had to go to the psi event who's our distributor right after burrito so i was all fancy because we had to go and, and steal some event um alcohol and and snacks <laughs> We yeah. literally, we literally went to that PSI event and we found a quarter and played bocce ball and just like hung out by ourselves. Like we were like, those events are supposed to be for publishers to like meet other publishers and like mingle. And we were all like, absolutely not. <laughs> we just like found our corner. We're like, this is our bocce ball now. And we're, hi. <laughs> Though like the five of us going to like industry events is always very awkward. <laughs> Cause we're just like, mm, hello. I'm much more comfortable in like a Twitch meetup space than like a professional industry um, events oh. that happen at conventions. Um, going, like to people that we don't, never have met before, you know, you people like I said, you have like this image of who they are in your head, mm -hmm. and them, and like there's some people that are almost exactly what you picture. Yeah, and for sure. There's some like G for me. G is exactly and nothing like you expect at the exact same time. Yeah, which is how I feel about Billy. And Billy's alone. Billy, Billy, yes. Wait, that's yeah. so, he's absolutely nothing like how you picture him, but he's also exactly how you picture him. That That's so accurate. Um, this is Billy Bogota from like Wormwood and Board Game House community, if you want to know who we're talking about. Um, so did you spin the board at the end of your turn? Did I what? Did you spin the board at the end of your turn? My turn was like, for, my turn was forever ago. I haven't taken my turn yet. We're just running our bots. We're not actually doing our. We're not doing our full turn. Are you doing your Did full you turn? Did you cheat? <laughs> wow, what quality I, gameplay! I hope you all know how to play Mechanica now. <laughs> it's fine. Honestly, I like just like shooting the shit with you all as well. It's also very. The game is just the background at this point. Yeah. Because there's no way to finish this. We got an hour. We've taken two turns and we have ten minutes left. Well, yeah. Um, here, do you want to honestly just chat about the rest of the questions I have? Um, since we've, we've gone through two full turns, um, for anyone who was interested, this is the TTS version of Mechanica, which is our board game. Just kind of gives you a sense of how it looks and how it plays. Um, I, I what? Also, Meg won because she's the only one that completed Yeah, Megan game. definitely won. She had this, here, we can poop it out for you if you want. Loop. Here you go. Oh! oh Congratulations. Oh, Press the button. Press the button. Oh my god, he want, do you want to flip the table? That actually scared me! It flipped towards me, which I did not appreciate or anticipate. Well, there it goes. There it goes. Hey, thank you for the follow. Um, fun a, fun a good done. Wait, y'all, we hit 450 followers. 
Thank you so Woo! much. Woo! Um, I took off the little bar because I want to make this overlay for this event more profesh. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. We're at 450 followers, which means two things. One, we will be doing a board game giveaway. I don't know if we'll do it today, but we'll do it. We'll do it very soon. Um, and I'm playing more Alien Isolation on stream. Every time we get another 100 followers, I do an Alien Isolation stream with spoopy alerts on. And you can, I got this idea from Invert. If you're from Invert's community, this 100% this idea goes to him. This is a thing that he does on his channel. You, so. Yeah. We stole it from you and did it for Derek, so. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's because it's such a good idea. <laughs> so I'll be playing more Alien Isolation. I think I'm finally getting to like the truly scary part. Hey, thank you for the follow, Kirby. Really appreciate it. Welcome on in, everyone. Uh, we've got like 10 minutes left. Um, let's just chat. Um, sure. Oh no, oh, oh God, it just, it's just like a tan background now. It's so ugly. Let me like at least get, there we go, a little tidy bot. There we go. Beautiful. Uh, okay. Other, other questions that I had written down that I just kind of was interested in asking you folks. Um, let's see, which one do we want to start with? Okay, so this this is a little generic, but I'm, I'm interested to hear your different answers on this. Um, what has been the most rewarding and also what has been the most challenging thing about running a Twitch channel for two years, three nights a week, getting on stream? Um, most rewarding and also the most challenging part of that becoming part of your life. Um, well, I'm trying to decide if I want a most rewarding moment or if I want like like rewarding in general. However you I'm, want to interpret that, go whatever comes to mind. I, I'm gonna go with I, I'm gonna go with general for both of them. Okay. The most rewarding thing is definitely the community. Mm -hmm. Like when we started streaming board games, our thought was to focus on the board games, but we very quickly realized that it's not about the board games; it's yeah. about the people and the interaction. So. We joke that Borgian House never plays a game correctly, and that's actually probably true, but it, it's always been about- We also don't play tabletop simulators correctly. You don't. Yeah. Also, if you want to go become part of their community, the link to their Twitch is in chat now. Yeah, we're only we're only like 13 away from being a, a thousand followers, so- Hell yeah, go on. follow BGH, y'all. They, they, they so helped us a lot with our early streaming days, just like um, lending us their community a little bit, and Steven helped me a lot with just learning how to stream at all. So if you like us, please go follow them. Um, it's um, the least we can do to say thank you. The hardest part, and um, I'm probably stealing from all of us, but the hardest part in general is there are days that can be a bit of a grind. Yeah. It, it, there are days that, you know, we have a schedule three days a week that we want to stick to, and we love the community and we want to be there for community, especially during a time like this when, you know, the world is a little bit in chaos. So if we can be that little bit of a bright spot for people, we want yeah. to do that. But you know, there are days after a long, because we all have day jobs too. You right. know, after working 40 hours a day, that maybe we don't feel up to, you know, getting on camera that day, but yeah. we do um, because we feel like we owe it to the amazing community that we have. Mm -hmm. That was actually one of my questions was like, how do you gear yourself up for like, even on those days that you don't feel like streaming? Um, Lots of alcohol. Yeah. Or you in particular, yeah. I know you're just wasted every time you're on camera, Stephen. We we all know it's fine. It's a joke. Stephen doesn't drink, chat, if you don't know him. It was a joke. And if you do drink, drink responsibly. Yes. For me, I think the most rewarding part is those little moments. When Wormwood raided us the first time and I lost my shit, or when Mark Humes raided us and I lost my shit, or even like when we do, when I did the uh, the gopher hole thing. Hilarious. <laughs> like, it's those little moments yeah. that, I, that I think are highlights that people still remember even like after. Yeah. Um, but I think that the worst part is that a lot of people think that you need to have a separate personality to be on the internet. Yeah. I like to hurdle that trope and not do that, but it's very difficult because by not putting on a persona for the stream, I means I don't hide how terrible of a loser I am. You let people so, in more and like, which is always- Yeah, and it's just like, I'm bad at losing. Mm -hmm. So when I get angry, it just happens and I can't get away from that. So like, it was, it's sort of building on what Steven said, is that when you have bad days, mm -hmm. losing a board game makes it so much worse. Yeah. And then 
I have to sign off the stream with what happened to peace. <laughs> and yeah. there's no peace in my head. In no... that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's one of those things where it's taxing. Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's something that is also conversely one of the more rewarding things about streaming the way you all stream, which is just like you don't put on a persona, you're just yourselves, is that like when you meet your fans in real life, there, there's no barrier of like, oh, you weren't what I expected. You know, like what you see on stream is like who you are in real life. And I think as like taxing as, as that can get hard in moments, I think it also can create some of the most rewarding moments of streaming um, because it, it opens the door for like more normal human connection. Um, if you don't feel like you're always putting on this like face. Um, yeah, um, we have to, it was, oh, Megan didn't answer the question yet. Um, if you don't want to, that's fine. If it's, if it's. I mean, they kind of, they kind of covered it. I mean. Yeah, that's totally fine. Part, yeah, the most rewarding part is definitely the community. I mean, we've cultivated a really amazing group of people. Really have, yeah. Um, both in in our Discord and and you know on on stream, um, and we get to do fun things every evening. And I mean, the most like like they said, it, it can it can be taxing, um, and it can be nerve wracking for me because while I don't put on a a persona mm -hmm. like I'm who I am I'm also an introvert so if I meet you out in public I'm probably not going to be as bubbly as I am on stream because right. I immediately just like like curl into myself right so like if you do meet me I promise I'm just really overwhelmed yeah oh absolutely yeah yeah <laughs> well, and like on the other side of that, Meg and I have been together long enough where I sort of absorb that energy and put it out in the opposite way. Mm -hmm. So meeting yeah. people, for me, I enjoy meeting people, but afterward it fucking sucks because I'm just exhausted at the end of a day of meeting people. Yeah, because me too. Not that I'm making up for Megan, just that it's sort of two sides of the same coin. She's gonna come in, like fold into herself and I'm gonna sort of just blossom to try and protect her from that. And it's just, whew. That's like a cute dynamic though. I, I kind of love that. <laughs> I love that. Uh, okay, we only have a couple more minutes. So um, real quick, the next, um, the next question is, um, because you guys currently stream board games, but I know you're hoping to rebuild your Humblewood campaign once you're actually allowed to see people in real life. Um, I asked Paladin this question yesterday and I thought his answer was really interesting and I'm interested in what the three of you say. If you had to be a player forever or a DM forever, which would you choose and why? Like which of those, like why are you drawn to whichever those roles you're drawn to? Um, player versus DM. Thank you, Sims, for the host. I appreciate it. I'll see you soon. Player because uh, being a DM is stressful yep. and terrifying, and don't suggest doing it for the first time on the internet. You're doing so well, though. Like, I'm so it's excited so for that series to come back. <laughs> so scary. <laughs> it is scary. I I don't. I have just started my first long form DMing campaign, and I'm not on the internet. And every time I'm in sweats because it's scary. <laughs> uh. I, I also like to pretend to be other people. So like all of my characters are like super tall and like they're they have to be they have to be really pretty so I can flirt with everyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, me too. <laughs> um, that's actually tough. Whether I wanted to choose one or the other. Yeah. I think. I think I'm probably if I had to, if I had I like doing both, but if I had mm -hmm. to choose just one, I'd probably be being. But it, it is very tough because I do really enjoy being a player too. Yeah, yeah. I would be a DM forever. Okay, that's kind of what I would have expected from you. Mostly because I enjoy being involved and I enjoy shaping the story how I want to do it. And as a player, I have played in a handful of games now and I have gotten the vibe that nobody really enjoys me when I'm a player because I'm very particular so I'm gonna say DM, so that everybody has a better time. It's not that, it's not that we don't enjoy you. Yeah. It's Derek, <laughs> as somebody that's DM for Derek for a couple of years, Derek likes to get his own head cannon. Mm -hmm. And once Derek has decided in his head what the story is or what the actual task at hand is, it's very hard to get Derek off of what Derek believes. Gotcha. So it's not that he's a bad player, it's just Derek is very opinionated about how he feels about things. Also, he doesn't also, 
helpful to, to piggyback off of that. Um, our group, our home group, are very heavy our peers because mm -hmm. we're all theater people. Right, yeah. Eric is not an our peer. In fact, he generally like then recedes into his own like thing, mm -hmm. his own mind whenever that's happening. But when we get back into like the purpose of whatever we're doing, that's when he jumps back into that's super try and help. Super interesting. Well, thank you for answering all of my my, my questions. Um, we are unfortunately out of time. We're going to switch over to um, Invert Sims, um, mostly Eric um, and NDD20. We're going to be playing some Fake Artist Goes to New York. I'm really excited. Um, thank you so much for joining me, VGH. This was really fun. Um, we played so much Mechanica. It was so great. Um, totally didn't just shoot the shit for an hour. Um, thanks for Wait. really... This is the only Mechanica gameplay video you'll ever need now. This is this is it. This is the one-stop shop to learn how to play. Why did you change your your uh, nightbot to be your to botanum instead of botanist? That was Alkali, not me. Take that well, up with him. That's why we did it wrong. It should be, it should be botanist. There we all go. Because all the fronds, all because we're plant themed for some reason. Um, yes. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, where can people find you if they want to follow you all? Um, any last little things you want to plug? Um, I mean, the big one is our Twitch. Please follow mm -hmm. us on there. We're like 13 away from getting a thousand followers. Um, beyond that, BGH on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. Join our Discord if you like talking about games and cute animals and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or to the uh, Resident Discord, which is also amazing. And YouTube. And you um, yeah, and YouTube. Thing. Last thing we're going to say is, Rachel, we're very proud of everything you've done. Yes. Stop we know that. how hard you've worked. Stop that. And as your friends, we're very proud of you. Stop yes. it. You, you are this community, and it wouldn't be around without you. So we love you, and everybody else should. And yeah. Don't make me cry. There, there you go. Thank you so <laughs> much. I really appreciate it. Um, I mean, honestly, this community probably wouldn't, have ex wouldn't exist if I hadn't met you guys and seen, like, I don't know, seeing your channel really, like, I've been on, I've been watching Twitch for, like, five years, but watching you all on Twitch inspired me. Why are you laughing at me? Because it's more of those, if these idiots can do it, anyone can. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. Stop that. Well, you're welcome. It was a non-video, it was, you guys were the first non-video game Twitch channel that I watched, and then I went and started, like, a video game Twitch channel, but, like, seeing people in the board game space on Twitch, like, that was really helpful for me to learn that I could do this for the company, and that people, like, People on Twitch also like board games. Like just like having that, realizing how engaging that could be was really inspiring to me. So thank you guys. This community wouldn't exist without you. I'm gonna turn it back at you. Don't give me compliments. I don't like them. Um, no, but you are ready them. End it. All right. <laughs> thank you all so much for joining me and I will be right back. Give us like five minutes to just transition to the next segment and I will catch you all over with Invert and the rest of the crew. See you all later. Um, bye bye Bye.